What up, Mikey's crew? It's your good friend Michael here, and welcome, sports fans, to another edition of Sports Talk. You may be noticing right now I'm filming in a different location. I'm currently filming in my basement. I'm going to be doing the stats actually off the computer today instead of in front of another tablet. Uh, I think the computer is actually working a little bit faster, so that's going to be good. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Western Michigan Broncos football. We'll also be previewing um, their game against Eastern Michigan, their big win over Akron. We'll preview Michigan game against Illinois, run down the Mid-American Conference scoreboard and the Big Ten scoreboard, also run down the NFL scoreboard as well. Uh, it's going to be a little bit shorter edition once again today of uh, Sports Talk. Um, just be patient with me. I, you know, got got some things working around the, I'm working around the house, so not going to have time to do a full length episode, but we'll definitely do the meat and potatoes that I do every week, and that's talking about Western Michigan and Michigan and running down the NFL scoreboard. So let's get started with Western Michigan's win over Akron last weekend. They defeated the Zips 41 nothing. Western Michigan, of course, was ranked in the top 25. Uh, the AP poll for the first time uh, in their program history, coming at number 24. With the win, they've moved up to number 20 in the rankings. Akron was thinking, yeah, we're going to come in here, we're going to upset you. Not even close. Uh, Western came into the game only about a 12-point favorite, which I was kind of surprised. I mean, I understand it's a road game, and maybe people were thinking a little bit about Western. Like, well, they only beat Northern Illinois, a team with one win by 15. They, They might have been thinking, well... Maybe Western's not as good as we thought we were. I had projected the score was going to be 41-14. to I gave Akron a little too much credit as Western won 41 uh, Completely dominating the Zips. And Western recorded their first shutout since the 2006 season, which was a great thing to see. Also, before the game, Akron uh, decided to take an oar that had Row the Boat written on it, light it on fire, and then smash it. Now, the Broncos did not know that this happened until after the game was over, but you can guarantee they were motivated to play this game. Um, whether, you know, they, they were motivated to play this game with or without Akron smashing an or. No doubt about it. If they had known about that, they'd have been even more motivated to take down the Zips. But you know what? Let, like Coach P.J. Fleck does, he keeps his team focused on the game at hand. And what, you know, he doesn't look at, you know, way down the road, you know, oh, we've got Toledo coming up, you know, at the end of the regular season. It's going to be the big game. That's the one we're focusing on. That's not P.J. Fleck. That is not him at all. It's the Akron season. They went 1-0. They put that behind them. They're focusing right now on, on the Eastern Michigan season, which is coming up this week. Um, Eastern Michigan, by the way, they're looking pretty good, too. They're 5-2 and two on the year. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But that's what he does. He keeps everything in front of him, and his players know it too. He keeps everything in front of them. Uh, the players keep everything in front of them as well. Uh, Jarvion Franklin, over you know, in this game, 33 carries, 281 yards, one touchdown. He averaged 8.5 yards a carry. That's huge. That's impressive. And it is also a new single-game uh, rushing record in Western Michigan Broncos history. Who was the first person that Jarvion Franklin thanked um, when he was told? That he got this, that he now had this milestone in program history. His offensive linemen, he recognized them first because any good player is going to recognize his teammates first before he recognizes himself. That's selfless, and that is class. Unlike what Akron showed by smashing an oar, which was completely, in my opinion, classless. If you have to get motivated by destroying another team's motivational, you know thing around their program, that's pretty despicable in my opinion. Um, so you know what, Akron completely deserved to lose it, to lose this game. This may be a team that Western does face once again in the MAC championship game. Um, they could they could be Akron or it could be Ohio, which by the way is the team that just got beat by Eastern. Both those teams already have one loss um, on the year in conference play. The cl- next closest teams have you know, just two losses. That that side of the conference and the east side could see a two-loss conference team going to the title game against a Western Michigan team who could be completely, you know, still undefeated at that time, which hopefully they are. So let's get break down some of the stats, by the way. Um, Zach Terrell, 21-31 to 31 for 207 yards and two touchdowns on the day. No interceptions still, which is awesome. However, Western Michigan did record their first turnover of the year, so now every team in the country has had at least one turnover on the year. 
They had a fumble um, early in the game. Uh, so, I mean, that that gets that, you know, out of the way now. Um, if any of the players were worried about turning the ball over, you know, oh my gosh, we're the only team in the nation that hasn't turned it over yet. Now they don't have to worry about that. I'm not saying, you know, you play complete and utter abandon now, you know, and you can do every, anything you want. You still got to protect the ball, which I know Western's going to do. Um, besides Franklin, Devon Tucker, 10 carries, 53 yards and a touchdown. Zach Terrell also had two rushing touchdowns on the day. Uh, he had carried the ball 10 times for 34 yards. Jamari Bogan did play, but he was limited to two carries for nine yards. Coach P.J. Fleck could tell he was not 100% and uh, took him out of the game. Um, we'll have to see if he, how much he plays this week against Eastern Michigan. But with the way Jarvion Franklin's running right now, I would say, you know what? Keep him in the game. Uh, keep Franklin in. He, he can get most of the carries. I mean, this guy was Mac Freshman of the Year and Mac Offensive Player of the Year in the same season. So you've got a good core of running backs. You don't have to rush Bogan back, in my opinion. Uh, for Akron, Trevon Chapman was 13-31 to for 153 yards and two interceptions. He obviously didn't have a good day. They couldn't run the ball either, as their highest uh, rusher was Manny Morgan, eight carries, 53 yards. Chapman had 14 carries for 49 yards, and Van Edwards Jr., six carries for 28 yards. Corey Davis caught two touchdown passes on the day, but only had 63 yards receiving. Carrington Thompson led the way at five receptions for 80 yards on the day. Devon Tucker was the one that lost the fumble, um, just to let you know. Uh, also, Robert Spillane went out of the game with an injury, but uh, he probably will be back, Coach P.J. Flex says, for the uh, Eastern Michigan game uh, on Saturday. Uh, Caleb Bailey and Casey Carson each had the interceptions for the Broncos on Saturday. So they looked good, although Butch Hampton did miss an extra point, and he did miss one field goal. So one thing to work on this week, the kicking game. Not that it's a big worry. Butch Hampton's been pretty good all throughout the season. Um, so I don't think there's really anything to worry about there. Let's talk about team stats really quickly when those come up here. Well, Western Michigan was, like I said, dominant in all phases of the game. 14 of 18 on third down conversions. How frustrating for that was for that probably was Ak for, for Akron was that. Giving up so many first downs on third downs. Akron was only four of twelve. 585 yards total for Western to 283 for Akron. 207 passing for Western to 153. 378 rushing yards to 130. Western, four penalties, 41 yards. Akron, nine penalties, 47 yards. And you want to know the time of possession? Western controlled the ball, 37 minutes, 12 seconds to Akron's 22-48. That's a winning success right there, holding on to the ball. Um, is definitely going to help you win the game. So Western Michigan looked fantastic uh, this past weekend. Hopefully, they're going to play that well this weekend, coming up against Eastern Michigan. But before we get to that, Let's run down the Mid-American Conference uh, scoreboard. All right, here we go. Mid-American Conference scoreboard. Eastern Michigan defeated Ohio 27-20. Ohio is the MAC East favorite this year. Miami of Ohio, they get their first win of the season, defeating Kent State 18-14. Both those teams, by the way, 1-2 and two in Mid-American Conference play, on the East, and they're in the East Division. Ball State beats Buffalo 31-21. Toledo beats Bowling Green 42-35. It looks like, in my opinion, Toledo's defense doesn't look that great. If they don't look that great, Western Michigan may be able to put up a lot of points on them and may be able to shut down Toledo. We'll have to see at the end of the season. And Central Michigan goes on the road in triple overtime, defeats Northern Illinois 34-28. The Huskies are a hard team to beat. They're the former American Conference champions. They're going to be a tough team to beat every week, no matter who they're playing. Their one and six record really doesn't indicate how good this team is. I mean, they really, in all honesty, could have a couple more wins. There's one right there. They should have beat Western Illinois. They're not as good as what their record um, is saying. So now let's preview next week's game, which is against Eastern Michigan, who comes into the game five and two. A big surprise, really, you might say on the year if you don't usually follow Mid-American Conference football. However, I would probably guess that um, Western Michigan is not too surprised um, with this. Uh, Western Michigan, once again, coming in, you know, this game, they're ranked 20th. They're 7-0. and 
Uh, the game's going to be on ESPN3 at 3.30, so you're going to have to watch it on the ESPN app. I'm kind of shocked this wasn't put on like CBS Sports Network, especially with how good actually both teams are, especially with the way Western's playing. I don't know why a top 25 team, in my opinion, is not going to be you know on the, one of the ESPN networks or CBS Sports Network. I don't know why, um, but for some reason... This game is not on there. Um, so you're going to just have to check it out on the app, I guess. But Eastern Michigan, you know, they have a good coach. They have Chris Creighton as their coach. <clears throat> he has a lunch pail mentality when it comes to his team, where it's, we're basically bring your lunch pail, go to work, um, and we're going to, you know, be successful. Um, they, they, they've they done things, you know, at the uh, beginning of games where they knock down a brick wall. Their, you know, their field, their color is, is gray. So it is really hard to probably watch that on TV so you don't have to adjust it. You're not like watching a black and white screen. But, you know, he has that gray feel um, kind of, you know, as like a, another thing. It's another workman's mentality, basically. Um, so he's done a, you know, he's done a good job uh, at Eastern. He's, you know, he's turning the program around there. And, and I don't know, maybe next year they could be competing, you know, with Western being as good as they are. Not saying that, you know, I'm not giving Eastern a chance. This game does kind of scare me a little bit just because they are 5-2. and two. But uh, odds makers are giving Western Michigan a 23.5 point favorite in this game, which to me is a little bit surprising uh, just because of the fact... I mean, maybe they're thinking, okay, they just beat Akron 41-0 and they're going to roll, roll through um, this game. But to tell you the truth, this game, it's a rivalry game. Um, so that's going to be a big factor in this, but you know, 23 and a half points. I don't know if Western can cover this one to tell you the truth. Uh, Brogan Roback is going to be a guy that you're gonna have to watch out for. He's a good quarterback at Eastern Michigan. He's having a pretty good season. Um, they, they, they don't run the ball maybe as well as what they should. 110 carries for 420 yards and five touchdowns. However, they do got a receiver in Bailey, the second 34 receptions, 472 yards and three touchdowns. They might not move the ball as well on offense, but I'll tell you what, they do have a pretty good defense. Um, Western scoring 44.3 points per game, but Eastern scoring 31.6. Western's only giving up 17.6. Eastern, however, is only giving up 28.3. That's a pretty good margin right there, too. Western is averaging 493 yards to EMU's 427. Definitely Western is averaging a lot more rushing than passing yards, 265 to 228. Eastern's got 270 passing yards to 156. They are giving up 407 yards, which means Western can move the ball on them to, to Western's 337. But they're only giving up 139 on the ground to the 268 through the air. Now, their five opponents, last five opponents that Eastern's faced... They beat Charlotte 37-19, Wyoming 27-24, Bowling Green 28-25. They lost to Toledo 35-20, and they beat Ohio 27-20. So their only loss in there is to Toledo, and then they got blown out by Missouri. Um, they also beat Mississippi Valley State. That was a route. The Missouri game was a route and a loss. I think it was like 61-21 they lost that one. So the opponents they've beaten are not that great, but still they've won five games on the year. So, yeah, they, they beat a Bowling Green team that's only won one game. They lost to Toledo by 15. That was at home. I'm going to say Western maybe wins this by 20. I don't think they, like I said, I don't think they covered the spread in this game. But I think Western wins by 20. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe they will cover it. Um, but my prediction for this game will be, how about Western Michigan 41, Eastern Michigan 21. That's what I think the final will be. And I think at halftime the game will still be close. The game against Toledo was close. It was like 7-6 to six at the half. The game against Ohio was close. So I think at halftime, this game will be close. But then second half adjustments, Western's going to be able to move the ball with you know Franklin. If Bogan's playing, Zach Terrell will be able to move it through the air. If Western can't, you know, if Western's struggling to move it on the ground, I bet you we can find Corey Davis, Carrington Thompson, Michael Henry, any of those guys out there. Um... I think Western wins the game, but I think it will be closer in the first half than what people think. But then I think in the in the end, I think they kind of run away with it a little bit. So I'm saying Western Michigan wins 41-21. In fact, I'm here. 
they're saying, you know, Western Michigan is going to win. You know, they have a 96.9% chance to win this game. And to me, that's surprising with Eastern being 5-2 and two and Western being 7-0. and oh. But then again, those five wins, they haven't came against the greatest opponents where Western has beaten two Big Ten teams and Eastern's beaten Wyoming and you know, Bowling Green. Yeah, not the greatest teams in the world, but still their wins. They, you know... You know they they've got confidence. It looks like Eastern Michigan if they you know if they can win one more game, bowl eligible, could be going to a bowl game this year. And they haven't been to a bowl game I think since the '90s. So that would be an accomplishment if Eastern Michigan could get to a bowl game. I think there was one year recently, like a few years back, they might have been six and six, but they played like two Division One AA foes, so they were uneligible, in, not uneligible, ineligible. <clears throat> to go to a bowl game uh, because of that. If all like the bowl slots weren't filled, they would have been able to go. But because of that, um, they, 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 they couldn't go. Um, so now with that preview done, let's run down the Big Ten scoreboard. The big game this past weekend was Ohio State versus Wisconsin. Badgers lost in overtime 30-23. to Nebraska holds off Indiana, stays unbeaten. They win 27-22. to Illinois defeats Rutgers 24 to 7. Rutgers finally scored another finally scored a touchdown um, and they could only score 7 against Illinois. I'm telling you what, the rest of the year it's going to be tough I think for Rutgers to score. Minnesota defeated Maryland 31 to 10. Iowa beat Purdue 49-35. That game was not as close as the score indicated. 35 to 7 was the score at half. Now Daryl Hazel did get fired this past week Purdue's coach. They have a 3-3 three three record, but he was 9-33 through four seasons. People have already been started to speculate. P.J. Fleck as the next head coach at Purdue. Um, however, also Brock Spack, a former Purdue assistant under Joe Tiller, who is the Illinois State head coach, is also rumored for the job. If I, if I were Purdue, I would hire Brock Spack because just because of the fact he coached under Joe Tiller, Joe Tiller had success at Purdue. Brock Spack knows the program. He would be a good fit there. If I was Purdue, that's who I go with is Brock Spack. Uh, that's I'm and I'm kind of saying that too because I hope PJ Flex stays in Kalamazoo. And Michigan State once again loses. Northwestern defeats them 54 to 40. Not only this time does Michigan State score, but they give up too many points. Michigan State right now, 0-3 in Big Ten play, might not be going to a bowl game this year. That is that is really um, shocking. Uh, just, you know, compared to, you know, obviously last year they were in the college football playoff. This year, they might not even go to a bowl game. <clears throat> just a surprising turn events. Them and Notre Dame both. I mean, geez. Both teams, you know, looked like coming into the season were going to be good. That we, we were all hyped about the Notre Dame, you know, big you know, Notre Dame Michigan State game early in the year. Michigan State wins, and we're thinking, well, by golly, they're going to be in for a great year. They just be a great team. And now we're looking at it. Michigan State only has wins over Notre Dame, who's terrible, and Furman. <laughs> this late in the season, or this, you know, midway point of the season, Michigan State wins over Furman and a Notre Dame team who is just downright awful. Not good at all. Notre Dame has a win over Nevada. That's great. And Syracuse, who, by the way, just beat Virginia Tech. So does that mean that Notre Dame beats Virginia Tech? Probably not. <laughs> so anyways, let's, let's, let's look at this uh, game against um, Illinois coming up this Saturday for Michigan. Uh, th I think they're coming in as a 28-point favorite in this game, however. Um, I, don't, I don't know if, if there is an exact line out in this game yet i think it's because of the fact we don't know the status of west lunt if he's going to be able to play for illinois um on the year so far he's 78 for 129 840 yards six touchdowns one interception however i don't think it's going to matter if lunt plays or not illinois is going to lose this game in my opinion 98.6 percent chance is what michigan has to win this game um but michigan i mean just shut down the passing game do what you did against rutgers Pressure the quarterback. Don't let him get out. Stop the running attack. Force him into some third and longs, and I think you can stop Illinois. Michigan, just keep doing what you're doing on the ground. They had nine rushing touchdowns in the game against Rutgers. That's a new program record. They're probably not going to break it against Illinois, but I'm gonna just going to say 
Um, you know, just keep pounding it on the ground. Um, have Wilton Spate only throw it if he really needs to in this game. Um, you know, he only attempted 11 passes against Rutgers. He might attempt 15, maybe 20 in this game. I'm going to lean more toward 15 passes, and they end up running the ball a whole lot. Chris Evans, leading rusher for Michigan on the year, 48 carries. <clears throat> Excuse me, four, 400 yards, three touchdowns. Amara Darbo has the same amount of receiving yards as Evans does rushing yards. Uh, except he has five touchdowns. So uh, Michigan, you know, just hit the receivers when they really need to, in my opinion. That's what I think they should be doing. Um, just run the ball. you got Evans. You've got, uh, obviously, Davion Smith. You've got Ty Isaac. You can use a lot of different running backs. <clears throat> Michigan on the year so far, uh, scoring average of 50 points a game and only giving up 10. 10.3 to be exact. Uh, averaging 470 total yards and only giving up 212. Illinois, Illinois for their record being two and four, scoring 26 points and only giving up 26.2 points a game. That's a pretty close margin um, for only you know for having a two and four record. That's kind of surprising. Um, 371 yards they give up or 371 yards they gain they give up 388. So in their last four games. Illinois has beat Rutgers, but they've lost to Purdue in overtime, 34-31. They lost 31-16 in Nebraska, 34-10 to Western, and 48-23 to North Carolina. Their only other win is over Murray State. Probably that game and the Rutgers game is kind of skewing the points margin a little bit, uh, close to even, I would say, <laughs> if you ask me. So expect Michigan to win big this week. They're not probably going to put up 78 on Rutgers. However, I'm going to say whatever the spread is, they cover it. Illinois, I'm going to say, scores three points in this game. I three point. I'll give them three. That's about it. I think Michigan scores probably about mm, sixty. I'm going to say Michigan wins this game, uh, sixty-three to three over over Illinois. I almost said Rutgers, but I think that will end up being the final score, sixty-three to three victory over the Illinois Fighting Illini. So look for, like I said, big games between Western, for, for Western Michigan, and for Michigan this upcoming weekend. Also, don't forget that, other, uh, that Michigan game, by the way, 3.30 start time. Uh, let me go back and actually see if I can figure out what station this is going to be on. I think it's going to be on ESPN, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, BTN, Big Ten Network is what it's going to be on. So 3.30 Big Ten Network for the Michigan game. Other big game this weekend coming up, uh, Alabama, number one in the country, taking on number six, Texas A&M. Uh, that's going to be a great game to see, 3.30 on CBS for that. I will be at the Western game this weekend, Western Michigan versus Eastern Michigan, of course. Um, I'll be shooting shooting some footage at that game, trying to get some highlights for you guys to view here, so stay tuned for that. I know a lot of people tuned in for the Northern Illinois highlights. I was actually kind of surprised how many views I got on that, um, so... Hopefully you guys uh, tune in for that for the Eastern Michigan uh, highlights as well. Um, not only looking to um, shoot that, I, I love shooting videos for you guys. I'm also looking to, of course, grow my audience here on, uh, on YouTube as well. So um, that's just that's just something I'd like to do. So let's run over the scores for this past weekend in the NFL. San Diego Chargers defeated the Denver Broncos 21-13. Of course, Gary Kubiak, the head coach for the Broncos, was not there. He was still in the hospital with flu-like symptoms. Could be the reason why the Broncos uh, did not win this game, possibly. Um, I'm not really sure. Trevor Simeon, 30 for 50, 250 yards, and one touchdown in the game. <clears throat> the Buffalo Bills were all over the San Francisco 49ers, 45-16. to The Redskins defeated the Eagles, 27-20, so the Eagles 3-0 start. Not there now, they're 3-2. Browns still haven't won a game! 0-6 now. Could they be headed for 0-16? We'll have to wait and see. They... They lost to the Titans 28-26. By the way, Titans are 3-3. Three three. I know they probably, all those wins are probably against Note well. They did beat the Lions, although they could end up being nobodies in the end, I guess. Um, but the Titans, they'd only won like two home games since 2014, so for the home fans to see a victory, that's that's really nice. Uh, maybe they can stay around in the uh, AFC South. We'll have to see. That looks like a pretty weak division, if you ask me. New York Giants defeated the Baltimore Ravens 27-23. The Saints defeated the Panthers 41-38. Panthers 1-5. They were in the Super Bowl last year. The uh, Jacksonville Jaguars 
were shot out 13 to nothing by the Bears heading into the fourth quarter. And they still came back and won 17-16. Go figure, Bears can't win a game either. They're 1-5. The Lions defeated the Rams 31-28. They're 3-3 and on the year. How about the Lions? Last two games... They've picked off a pass on the opponent's final drive to seal the victory. So, but you know they've done that two weeks in a row. That's great. However, their pass defense looked pretty awful. Cody Kessler, not Cody Kessler. I'm sorry. Case Keenum competed, competed, completed. I can't talk right now. Twenty straight passes in this game. So for the Lions to end up winning is uh, pretty good. Uh, Dolphins, they surprised the Steelers 30-15. to Ben Roethlisberger got injured in this game. We'll have to see if he'll be back for next week. New England's 5-1. and one. Tom Brady just being Tom Brady. 29-35 20, for 376 yards and three touchdowns. They defeat the Bengals 35-17. Chiefs defeated the Raiders 26-10. <clears throat> Seahawks hold on to defeat the Falcons 26-24. A late no-call pass interference. Uh, no no call on a pass interference against uh, the Seahawks could have been on could have been on him. Uh, Richard Sherman should have been called for pass interference as he went for the ball uh, over Julio Jones' shoulders. Definitely it looked like he dragged him to the ground. No call there. Uh, should have been a pass interference call, in my opinion. Uh, Cowboys five and one. Dak Prescott just continues to impress. They defeat the Packers thirty to sixteen. In my opinion. You got to keep Romo on the bench. Let this guy keep playing. Let Prescott keep playing until if, if he starts playing bad, then you put Romo back in. But in my opinion, until that time, or if Prescott gets injured, it could happen. But until that time, keep him in. I mean, it, you'd be ridiculous to take this guy out if you after leading him to a five and one start. The Texans come back and defeat the Colts twenty six twenty three in overtime and on Monday Night Football. Jets didn't even show up. Cardinals defeat them 28-3. A big win for the Cardinals. They needed that to stay within sight of, you know, the playoff hunt as that's now starting to heat up in the NFL with only 10 games to go in the regular season. So that will do it for this edition of Sports Talk. I um, want to thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel for more content. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links are in the description below. Drop a thumbs up on this video if you enjoy it. Also, offer up any predictions. What do you think Western Michigan will do this weekend against Eastern, Michigan against Illinois, any other predictions uh, throughout college football and the NFL? That would be greatly appreciated. I also think I'm going to stick with this doing doing the sports talk down here in the basement. I really like the format of doing it on the computer and talking to talking to you guys. I It feels a lot smoother to me uh, than than talking you know while looking at a tablet and uh then looking up and and talking to you guys so i think i'm going to stick with this format um so drop you know leave a comment whether you like this format down here or not i know probably the scenery isn't the greatest but i i think it just it feels more comfortable to me doing it on the computer um versus you know looking at a tablet and then looking up and talking to you guys also just a little baseball talk Indians up 3-3-0 in their series against Toronto. They won 4-2. Cubs-Dodgers tied 1-1. Game 3 out in L.A. That will be <clears throat> tonight. Uh, hopefully Cubs can uh, continue to win. Uh, we want to snap that 108-year curse. And people, if people walk around saying, oh, don't worry, the Cubs got this, remind them, 108 years of tragedy for the Cubs. Just remind them about that. <laughs> So, well, thank you once again for tuning in. This is Michael Loud. Over and out, Mikey's crew. You guys are the best. You guys take care. <laughs>